Welcome back again. Thanks for stopping in. Uh, today let's take a look at something from vector analysis called the back cab rule. Okay, wherever and whenever you are using vectors, uh, it could just merely be your, um, you know, Calc 3 class, uh, but in physics and engineering, um, definitely all over the place. Uh, classical mechanics, uh, electromagnetism, fluid mechanics. Um, I, I think I've seen this in, in quantum mechanics as well. Um, sometimes you have the need for taking a, a, what we call a double cross product, uh, or sometimes we call it a triple product, uh, since there are three factors involved. But uh, since cross products can be a, a little, little hairy at times, especially when you have more than one, um, it is useful to be able to use this identity called the back cab rule. Uh, and you can probably see why it's called that from the um, one way we have of writing that identity. Okay, so uh, what I aim to do in this video is to um, show you what this identity would be for, say, one component of that triple product. Okay, now first we have to generate uh, the entire B cross C uh, product. Okay, uh, so if you know about cross products, you know about the determinant rule we have for calculating those. Okay. Uh, so this is not going to be a surprise, uh, very likely, if you uh, know about cross products. So let's calculate what B cross C would be uh, from this determinant. Okay, I'll be uh, using uh, more or less the method of cofactors here. So I'm going to take I uh, times this little uh, sub-determinant here, you might say. Okay, so I times B sub Y, C sub Z, minus B sub Z, C sub Y. Okay, and then plus J times its subdeterminant. Now, notice here, I'm, I'm using plus J. So sometimes we learn minus J uh, since, since we're moving into this uh, second position of the first row. Okay, but uh, I just like to do plus J. So B sub Z, C sub X, minus B sub x c sub z and then finally plus k times its subdeterminant b sub x c sub y minus b sub y c sub x okay all right so so there we go um, and then each of these would represent the x y or z component of this cross product okay so now let's figure out what a cross b cross c parentheses is okay the parentheses here are are important uh, because the vector cross product does not follow what we would call an associative rule okay so um, if, if we have some sort of operation that like, you know, just regular old scalar addition or multiplication that does follow an associative rule, we can group things however we like. Here it, it actually makes a difference. Okay, so uh, the placing of the parentheses here is, is crucial. Okay, so let's set up a determinant for this guy. Okay, I'm going to use just a little bit more space here. Okay, now in the second line, I have the components of A, A sub X, A sub Y, A sub Z. And in the third row, I'm going to have to write the components of that cross product, B cross C. So a little bit more writing. So down here, B sub Y, C sub Z minus B sub Z, C sub Y. Okay, and then the next, B sub Z, C sub X minus b sub x c sub z and then finally b sub x c sub y minus b sub y c sub x okay now let's just pick on the x component of this current product okay, and the reason I'm going to do that uh, one is um, you know we don't need to, to make this video uh, three times longer than, than it needs to be to do all three components. Okay, and once you kind of figure out uh, what's going on uh, with one of these components, 
then I, th I think it, it pretty much uh, plays out how it's going to go for the other two. Okay, so if all we're doing is the x component, we're going to take i here times this subdeterminant. Okay, so we have i. Okay, and then a sub y times this grouping down here, b sub x, c sub y minus b sub y, c sub x minus a sub z, and then times that grouping, b sub z, c sub x, minus b sub x, c sub z. Okay. All right, so let's, uh, let's just simplify this uh, inside of the square brackets, and that way we can just get rid of any distributive rule issues that, that might crop up here. So it looks like I have a sub y, b sub x, c sub y, minus a sub y, b sub y, c sub x, minus a sub z, b sub z, c sub x, and then minus minus on this last distributive part, a sub z, b sub x, c sub z. Okay, and again, um, we're skipping the, the j and k, that is the y and z components, uh, and you'll see, you'll see why when we get to the end. Okay, now let me uh, create a different screen here, and uh, we'll continue just a moment. Okay, so here's where we left off a moment ago. All right, and let's just kind of strategically uh, group some things here. Okay, and, and what I'm going to do as I continue here is uh, I don't really need to uh, write down the i. We, we, we know for sure this is going to be the uh, x component. Okay, so equals. Now, let's just, um, again, knowing this is the x component, okay, notice that I have two terms that contain a b sub x. So let me uh, write both of those. Uh, this way, b sub x, a sub y, c sub y, plus b sub x, a sub z, c sub z. Okay, and then similarly, we've got two terms here that contain c sub x. And again, the reason I'm picking on b sub x and c sub x here is because we are looking at x components of some vector. Okay, so those are going to be minus, I'll write the c sub x here first, uh, a sub y, b sub y, minus c sub x, a sub z, b sub z. Okay, now what I have in mind, eventually, is to factor out the b sub x from the first pair of terms, and the c sub x from, minus c sub x actually, from the last pair of terms. When I do that, it, it, you may notice that I have an a sub y, c sub y, a sub c, c sub z. That looks like two of the three parts of a dot product between a and c. Okay, And then likewise, if I factor out the minus c sub x from that second pair of terms, I have two out of three parts of an a dot b dot product. Okay, all right, well, um, you know, what, what we often do in, uh, in, in applied math uh, or pure math, this kind of depends, is if, if there's a part that we need that isn't there, uh, we, we add it in. Okay, now we, we can't add it in with impunity. We, we add it in, but then we have to subtract it off again. Okay, so let me do this. The, the part that we really need here to complete a, a full dot product b sub x. Uh, let me write a sub x, c sub x here. Now we we don't have that. That's I'm, I'm kind of pushing that in. So what that means is I have to include the negative of that somewhere down the line. Okay. So let me uh, put the negative of that, say right here, b sub x, a sub x, c sub x. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy in the the the, the other two terms here that have b sub x plus b sub x 
a sub y, c sub y, plus b sub x, a sub z, c sub z. Okay. All right, next, um, we, a, a similar maneuver can be made right here uh, with these last two terms, um, but I'm going to skip that. I'm just going to write down the last two terms at the end here, c sub x times a sub y, b sub y, minus c sub x, a sub z, b sub z. Okay, And what I'm going to do now is I am going to, just for the sake of convenience, take this, uh, this extra term, this compensating term, you might say, that I wrote down, and then just re reorder the, the product of those components there. Uh, instead of bx, ax, cx, I can write that as c sub x times a sub x times b sub x. I'm just going to scratch this out. It's the same thing. Okay. All right, now um, let's notice, as, as I was kind of previewing, the b sub x can be factored out of this first trio of terms now. And what I have on the inside of parentheses okay, really is the full dot product a dot c. Okay. All right, next, let me factor out negative c sub x from these last three terms. That is the one that I've kind of replaced using the red marker and the other two. And um, you may be interested here to see that what resides within the parentheses after I do that factoring is the full three uh, part dot product a dot b okay so the parts that the part that I added in and then subtracted off to compensate for each other actually helps us account for these full uh, dot products okay so what, what I have now is A cross the grouping B cross C. And again, we are only looking at the X component of this. Okay, so this is really B sub X, and then parentheses A dot C. Okay, that's, that's this thing. Minus C sub X, and then the dot product A dot B. Okay. Now, to do a full, complete, thorough, and, and a com totally exhaustive job on this, I, I would uh, proceed to do the Y component of the triple product and the Z component of the triple product. Okay. But what that would result in, I am claiming here, well, the X component resulted in B sub X times this scalar dot product minus c sub x times that scalar dot product. Okay, So by symmetry I'm claiming that the y component would result in b sub y times a dot c minus c sub y times a dot b and the z component, again by symmetry, b sub z times this scalar a dot c minus C sub Z times the scalar A dot B. Okay, so if you believe the second of those two lines, of course the first one we proved, and I hopefully you believe that, the second of those two lines, if you believe those, what, what we're really finding out here is that if we attach an, attach an I hat for the X component to these first uh, pair here, I have a B sub X I, C sub X Y, J hat, oops, and a K hat, finally. Okay, I can do some, some regrouping and, and factoring, etc. And, and what I finally get now is the full vector identity uh, that we claimed at the very beginning. Okay, the so-called back cab rule. All right, so like I said, um, you'll, you'll see this uh, probably most often in something like electromagnetism, 
uh, you know, not not like the freshman sophomore course, but like you know, maybe a junior course or above. Uh, some some classical mechanics in physics and engineering. Um, those, those are the places that I've seen it the most. But I, I have no doubt that where, wherever you're doing cross products and especially more than one of them, uh, you'll th th this will will show its face. And and knowing this this rule, the back cab rule is is helpful because basically you get to simplify these kind of these complicated cross product determinant sort of things into um, the dot products, which are scalars. Uh, d d scalar multiples of, of two vectors. In this case, uh, a dot c is a scalar multiple times b, and a dot b, scalar multiple of c. All right, well, I hope this has been helpful. I hope you can apply this to, uh, to what you're uh, learning in, in one of those courses. Um, leave me some comments if you, if you want to, uh, some suggestions or other things. I'm so glad that you um, stuck around all the way to the end of this. And I uh, hope to see you in um, another video sometime soon.